everybody. We, we made it back. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Debbie. Hi. Hi, Andy. How's it going? You know, it's been uh, one of those crazy weeks. I think we both kind of shared that experience um, across the country, but it's <laughs> it's been unusual. It, it, it's crazy. Um, you guys, we were just talking about... Um, like my, it started, I think a couple of weeks ago with my wash machine breaking. And then we've, you know, we got that fixed. And then my car decides that it just wants to start when it wants to start. And, you know, my youngest son is like a master mechanic <laughs> and he doesn't oh, I know. Didn't, I yeah. didn't know that. Huh. Yeah. So he fixes every, all of our stuff all the time. But now we're like, he's like going, I don't. I don't know. I don't know about this. We have to catch it. I've got to, he's got to teach me how to do a car thing with a code thing if I'm somewhere and it stops. And I said, you really think I'm going to be, you know, driving this car? I wanted to buy a new car next year. So I'm still, still on that path. Um, so anyway, then we were at the store yesterday and the other car got hit. Guy took off and yeah, and then, um, you know, it's just crazy. Like today, Andy, I didn't even think that. I, wasn't I begging you, begging off on the show? Because I'm literally packing stuff and um, we're having a new roof put on. And then they call and they say, mm -hmm. can we do it Monday? And and with it, with the new wood that comes on, we're going to get uh, uh, tented, you know, so there's nothing, oh. no termites, nothing. Yeah, the roofer said, oh, you know, some of the wood that comes in and I'm, we're like, well, we're tenting. We're going to do everything. You know, we're looking at solar. So we've for for weeks now, we've had people coming and going and all of that. And um, but then they call and say Monday. But today I just said no. No, I cannot push myself. I have had a dozen to 15, 16 readings in my queue every day. Today I've wow. got 10. I've got 10. I actually owe 12. And I go, I just can't. I can't put another nail in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, and then when I had the car trouble, you, something happened with Vicky. Uh, McDonald too. Her car went. Then so what happened to you? Well, I had just gotten my my hearse. I, if anybody knows me, I I'm a connoisseur of hearses. Apparently, uh, no. I uh, a few years ago, I had I had purchased a white hearse because I had a broken car. So that's where that led me there. And uh, I sold that one. And then I got to start liking this idea because it's kind of cool, you know, and it's some people say it's morbid. Other people say it's um, pretty awesome. But it it has served its purpose. Well, after a year of it sitting there, it did fire up and um, drove just fine. But underneath the car, it's hearses are notorious for having rust issues so because they're not meant to be driven daily and have all the paint <coughs> protections and all of that so um i was driving and then i hit a bump and underneath my drivetrain um snapped and broke and i ended up at the bowling alley um and brian came and picked me up but i'm telling you i i just got insurance put on it and transferred everything and I hope it can be fixed at a reasonable price because oh, it's it, it's fun to drive and it's got good heat and AC and everything and and, and a lot of headroom. <laughs> so <laughs> that's um, funny. Yeah. But that's oh, a, and it, so it's parked at a bowling alley right now. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh -huh. <laughs> People are wondering what's going on with that there. I don't know what it is, but it just seems like a lot of crazy stuff happening. A lot of um, you know what, too, what happened? This was crazy. Um, what was it, Saturday or something? <clears throat> you know, you guys, I do readings for uh, people all over the world, have for uh, constantly for five years now. And um, I don't know these people. I have a lot of repeat people, but this person I didn't have a, uh, I didn't know at all. 
And um, she was really up and everything, Andy. She was like, she wrote to me and she said, I'm so open to spirit and whatever comes and everything. And I was like, oh, I love her energy. And yeah. then I put the cards down and I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I saw her. I it's easy. I just went, oh, my goodness, her grand, her grandfather's going to die. Oh. And I immediately. I go, oh my goodness, he's gonna he's gonna die. And um and then I saw what was gonna happen to her life after that. Everything. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I said, here I have this, you know, when I I probably I don't know about you, but I probably only had to read a real death, maybe outside of the homicide work and this all that I do, probably seven times, and they all died. They all were they all died. And so I saw that and I go, well, I don't know this person. And whenever I tell anybody that somebody's died, the people are in front of me. And I said, here I'm on audio. So yeah. I had to really think about it. And I'm known for not sugarcoating stuff as some people, a lot of people know. That's the one thing they say about me. Um, and I had to figure out how am I going to do it? So I did tell her. And I thought, gee, my goodness. But I just saw, I over looked at it and looked at it and I go, he's going to die. He's going to die. And um, I mean, I told her everything that was going to happen afterwards. I mean, it was just clear as a bell. And so I sent it, you know, and just, you know, you just send it with your prayers. Right. And <clears throat> the next day I got an email and she said, uh, Debbie, literally my grandfather died last night. She had gotten my reading. Um, I did it kind of in the morning and he died that night. I was like, wow. oh my gosh, that was really weird. And it just happens. I kind of did a little video for some people and just said, you know, if you're a new reader or something like that, you know, kind of some tips on how to, uh, to deal with that type of news when you see it in the reading. Right. So that, that was really crazy. But tonight we have Lindsay Marino, a psychic medium, and, and you can tell us a little bit about her and, and bring her in. She's in the lobby right sure. now waiting. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited. Debbie's excited. We're all excited to have uh, Lindsay Marino on tonight. She's been featured on uh, Ohm Times Radio, Soul Love, Sedona Talk Radio, Evolving Soul, and uh, Low Country Live TV. And she, I do know her and her husband, Tony, have their own podcast show, which is amazing because they're both spiritual people and they work together. And uh, Lindsay also has master classes. So tonight she's going to be discussing um, a little bit about how she became involved in mediumship, her story, and how she can help other people, including, you know, other mediums and regular people, or you know what I mean, uh, lay people, people that aren't really connected to spirit as much, but really want to connect to their deceased loved ones and find ways in how to do that. So um, I, I, she's also an author. She's co-authored a book of, it's called Three, 365 Days of Angel Prayers. And she oh. has a free video series as well. So check out the links in the description. Um, her links are there and um, we're excited to bring her in here in right. uh, in a minute here. So, uh, <coughs> all right. I have a little coughing thing going on. So if I cough, excuse me, and you talk, Andy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. It's exciting to have her on, and we have a full schedule of all kinds of interesting people. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Hi. Lindsay. I'm so excited to be here with both of you. Thank you so much. So I'm excited to talk to you. I was just listening to your stories at the beginning, and I, I it's so interesting how everything kind of unfolds <laughs> with oh, these great. with mediums. <laughs> It does. And that's why I went and burned a lot of sage and um, 
at various herbs in my backyard. <laughs> I'm like, enough of this. We're not going <laughs> to, no more breaking anything. <laughs> well, we're so glad to have you um, here and excited to um, have you just tell us a little bit about you and, and anything you want to talk about. We're here. We love yeah. it. So for me, I'm actually originally from Boston, but I'm in Tampa. Um, luckily, the hurricane didn't hit here, just oh. rained a little bit. Um, so that's a good thing. But for me, I actually used to teach third grade. So I was a third grade teacher for seven years, and I got my master's in education. So my thing is, I love teaching, and that will never go away. I love teaching people about spirituality and about their spiritual business and, and that sort of thing. But for me, I actually thought I was going to retire as a third grade teacher. I didn't think that I would do anything different. Um, but it was just a, a circumstance in my life that came up. And I grew up Catholic, so I used to think it was a sin to go to a psychic, and I didn't even know what a medium was. And it was just over time that things unfolded for me. Mm -hmm. So right. it, it, it was in 2007 for me that... Um, I went to college and I was at University of Tampa and I had my second day of teaching the third grade and someone I had planned on marrying, his name is Nick, we were going to meet to babysit for a family friend and he didn't show up and he was in a motorcycle accident. And after that, I started to completely, you know, everything shifted in my life. Everything that I had planned was gone, and I wanted to connect in with him. So what happened was I would receive visitations from him. So I had one where he said, you're not going to see me for a while, but I'm still going to be around you. And then I had some other experiences with him giving me signs and letting me feel his presence. And I knew with each situation that it was real, but at the same time, of course, you could feel like a crazy person because... I was seeing signs constantly and I was I was having more of a communication with him than I was with the living because I didn't really want to communicate with anyone other than the little third grade students that I had. And he oh. actually would come through them too, which was interesting. Oh, wow. So they would draw me pictures and write stories and it would connect to him and different things that he did when he was here that they didn't know about. So what happened was I kept saying prayers like, okay, if this is really happening, then send me a psychic medium. And that's what happened. I, I met a psychic medium that connected in with a, a mutual, a, a friend that was mutual friends with the psychic medium. His name's Jason. And then my friend Devin, who was a skeptic at the time, went out to eat. And Nick, um, the one that passed away, he actually was coming through to him and gave messages to me. So I knew it was confirmation that what was happening was I was really connecting in with him. And I kept on saying prayers to other people, you know, saying, let me allow me to connect in with other people too, and help them to confirm that there is a life after what we could actually see with our physical so, eye. So you just slipped into um, communicating and learning about it. You just slipped right into the mediumship. Yes. When I was little, I had outer body experiences, but I didn't realize that was what was happening until I was on my mediumship path when I was trying to connect in with Nick. And then I was reading near death experience books. And um, I read the book Journey of the Souls. Um, that, and I started to connect the dots of things that I was experiencing when I was little. I used to love collecting I called them, I was a rock collector, but really it was crystals. And I started to think about all these little things that I was doing that connected to what I'm doing right now. Oh, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, so how did you go ahead and develop it and really you go into it as a business or whatever? Right. So for me, I always felt like I wanted to connect in with Nick that was my first thing. So I was selfish in that way where I'm just like, I just want to connect in with him. I'm not really thinking about other people's past loved ones. And then after I connected in with him, I thought, okay, maybe I can connect in with other people's past loved ones. And I would go out. I remember I went out to actually a bar with some friends and I was just getting out of the house just to kind of get out of my house and not stay in. And when I went out, I connected in with this person that I didn't know and his mother had passed away and I was getting information about his mom for him. 
And that's when it started, I started to realize, okay, this is something more than me just connecting in with Nick. This is actually something that is a lot deeper than what I thought it would become. So as I was giving free readings for a while, I started doing that. And then I, I was watching the show Life Among the Dead. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Lisa Williams, but she um, was yes. on Lifetime yeah. for Women. And mm -hmm. that show was actually getting me through, moving through the grief, like knew, knowing that, okay, this is helping me. There is life after death. So I felt like I knew her just by watching her show. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed she had a class. So I thought, I'm going to go and take this class. So I did the class. I met other psychic mediums there. And that's where I started more of my development in classes. But before that, I never read books on mediumship. It was always about near-death experiences and spirituality. It was never strictly about how to become a medium. But the first book actually was um, We Are Their Heaven. That's what it was. Um, and my aunt actually told me about the book. And she said, you can still connect in with Nick. And I'm like, what do you mean? And, and she said, there's, there's a book that I'm going to get you and I'm going to send it to you. And it was by Alison Dubois, which I just remember hearing this, reading the stories about different experiences from people. I don't remember what else is in the book. I just knew it opened me up to think, wow, this is, this is real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we found so, that out now. It is real. That's real. Yes, exactly. Well, I, was, I was a skeptic before. Oh, well, a lot of people are until they see something or experience, you know, right. all of that. And um, for me, I had a near-death experience where even though I was psychic all my life and I knew what was going on and I could feel force fields and all this crazy stuff, I thought that was normal. It wasn't until that I, you know, I was pretty much told that I was going to die that um, it all came in like yeah. gangbusters. So then, and then you get validated and you know, hey, we know we know this is real. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Now, um, you teach a class. I didn't write it down, did I? Yes. I <laughs> I do have some classes. I, I have one that's, um, I have a lot of online classes. Yeah. One of them is called Unlock Your Inner Medium. And there's a couple different levels to it where I teach people how to tune in to past loved ones, other people's past loved ones. Um, and even there's one called Unlock Your Inner Medium, the next level, and it's for people that are doing this work, but they want a safe place to practice and they want to take it to the next level and have it become more deepened um, with their spirit connection. Because I think that's a big thing when you're doing this work, it's so easy to get into your human mind and second guess the things that come through when it comes to mediumship. And then it's very easy to compare yourself to things on reality television too. I find the students that come to me, they say, well, I wanna do it like this, but everyone has a different style. And I think that's important to remember. Oh that yeah, is, well, yeah, so I have true. a group. Yeah. yeah, I have a group called The Dead Talk. And what I love about it is that we're uh, five mediums that, bring in information that is different from each other. So we go into homes and then we, I mean, we've got the names and we have everything and people are getting all different kinds of things. So when we do gallery readings, we've got really one client and all of mm -hmm. us. So it's such a different experience, but sh this is why I got us all together because I go, we can get a bigger picture. Right. We really can. That's so true. It's so good to work with other people too. Oh yeah. Well, it 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 is when we go investigating because we got validation and all of that. So mm -hmm. in uh, Florida, do you have uh, uh, physical classes and online classes both? I so I actually just did a class in Palm Harbor, Florida, which is about forty minutes from Tampa, and I did a connecting with past loved ones workshop, and it was more for people that are trying to connect in with their own past loved ones. I have in-person retreats for my students too, which I love doing that where um, we go in, in person and we meet at a retreat house and we do exercises and different things like that to really tune into their mediumship development, intuitive development. But I feel like it's bigger than that. 
I actually feel like mediumship is connecting in with the spirit realm, but it's also being completely sure in your own energy so that you don't pull in your vibration. Because you know when you're feeling self-conscious about something, it's very easy where you pull your energy in and you're not pushing it out and feeling that increased vibration. Because when you're feeling like we are totally in your power, that's where the clarity comes in when you're connecting in with spirit. So I feel like that's a big thing and it could be online or in person too. Oh, that's amazing. And then you do a lot of radio and different things like that. Yes, my husband and I, like Andy mentioned at the beginning, we have a video podcast. So we um, talk about spirituality and business and we talk to empaths, people that are highly sensitive and, and <laughs> I know right Andy. There. Yes. Not me. I'm, thank goodness, not me. That's a hard <laughs> thing to live with, you guys. Bless you. <laughs> so it's like, but actually having the techniques to live as an empath, once you have them, then it, it feels so different. So we, that's our audience or people that are our psychic mediums or empathic people that are sensitive and they, they have so much to teach the world. But sometimes when you're standing in your power, that's when you get the most resistance. So it's very easy to close down during those moments. And it's important for us empathic people to speak up and to teach and to share, share this ability with other people. Uh, now you've co-authored a book. But have you done, I can't remember what it was, but an impact book would be fantastic. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like my husband is writing that one. Um, <laughs> but I am in the process of writing another one. So you might be picking up on something there. Um, so I just need to finish. I need to finish, finish the book. I've kind of put it on hold for a while. Andy, you know what that is, what that's like. We, yeah, we've got, yeah. a, we have a book that we're just like, okay, I did some work on it. And then we kind of wait. But yes, yeah, it's crazy how that happens. This is Andy, this is our, this is our third book. I don't know how many oh, I've yeah. done my fifth. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Uh, we've done Yeah, manifesting books and um, true stories and uh, I'm a tarot that. reader, so tarot book and uh, protective magic since I'm Wiccan trained. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's always fun. But an empath, when you said that, you just don't know how many people in my, well, I have like 334 people in a meetup group. Yeah. And um, there's so many are imp empaths. And, oh, I just go like, oh, I'm so glad I don't do mm -hmm. that. Because that's hard taking all that energy in. So you've right. got some techniques for that. This would be great as a, um, well, I don't know. As, can you imagine a Zoom room full of empaths? You're going to have <laughs> thousands of people. I feel like most of my students are, are empathic too. Mm. And it, it's funny because I feel like empaths, because they're so sensitive, Sometimes you can like open up and you can shine and then all of a sudden you want to go back in your shell directly mm -hmm. after. Like for me to even be doing this interview, if this was in 2006, I wouldn't even be doing this because I would be scared to put myself out there. Oh, yeah. But, they all like then, sh shelter, shelter. Yes. <laughs> you know? Exactly. But then when you start thinking about, okay, this isn't necessarily about me. This is more about the higher consciousness of things and also being yourself too. I think that's important to share. Um, then it kind of takes the attention off of you and you focus in on, okay, there's a reason that this stuff is happening to me in my life, in my life and it's important to share it too. I think it's so important for people, uh, empaths that want to go truly into mediumship, which can be soul rescue or anything like that, to have some kind of training like with you, Lindsay, because I had this one girl, very sensitive, go to the cemetery with us. Mm -hmm. And she was, she was a wreck. She was, she connected with someone and she was sobbing and crying. And I was like, oh my goodness, that was uh, that's when I knew, okay, wait a minute, you really have to find out how sensitive you are before you go doing some stuff. But training is really needed, really, really. Yeah, and I think being, being in that safe group where you have people around you that are like-minded, that's so powerful too. And 
-hmm. I find now that I'm so detached after my reading. Like if something comes up during a reading that's highly sensitive, and if there's a point where I'm crying or I have tear a tear in my eye, it's normally actually not even connected to me. It's connecting connected with the loved one that's passed. Um, so I might have like a, a feeling, I don't know if you guys have experienced that, where you feel this overwhelming sense of love or your eyes kind of well up and you know, this isn't my, these aren't my tears. This is the feeling of love from your father or whoever it may be. And then you give the message. And then once the reading's over, it's like totally disconnect from the reading after. And I think at the beginning, you know, doing this work, it's easy to kind of fall into the trap of taking the reading with you throughout the day and thinking about it and rerunning that reading over and over again in your head. Right. I am so not an empath, empath cause I, I'm very stoic. I, I do the readings. Like I said, all, I don't even know how many clients that um, have said, you know, put out in reviews. She doesn't sugarcoat anything, but there's a reason I do missing persons and homicides and okay. I have no problems looking at some of the worst things that you could, you know, imagine. And so I go, okay, I'm glad I'm that way. I was made that way for a reason that I don't take that on so that I could do the hard cases. Mm -hmm. So Katie, Katie says, how do you switch off? <laughs> this is a good question. Do you want me to answer that, Andy? Or yeah, go, yeah, go ahead, Lindsay. Um, and I think she's referring to the uh, empath ability. And, right. Um, okay. Okay, that's a good question. And I feel like for me, when I walk into a room now, before I even go into the room, I know exactly how I'm feeling. So when I walk into a room, if something shifts with me, then I think, hmm, was I feeling that way before? And I always kind oh. of backtrack to think about that if that comes up. So if I do open up to feel like, oh, my mood's changing, like what actually came? So I feel like the awareness is so important. And when you're aware, you can shut down and open up. So I think that's important. I'm kind of backtracking from switching on and off. But I feel like it's so important to be mentally clear yourself. So for me, when I take time and I know, okay, I have a two hour window where I'm like, okay, I can hang out for two hours, but then after I'm gonna go and step outside or I'm gonna kind of shift the energy and move in the room. I feel like I can think more clearly. And I think that's how I shut off is knowing that I have um, like I'm calling it an out to know that, all right, I, I can say that I'm going to stop by and hang out for a little bit. But if I feel like I want to go and get a drink of water or like move out of that space, that's my way of physically moving out of it and then coming back in. I feel like before I had, I had an imbalance of giving, like I was constantly giving, 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 and I wasn't comfortable with receiving. And that's when I felt like I couldn't switch on and off because I wasn't even aware that I was so out of balance with constantly giving. And when I became more sure of being able to receive and worthy of that, everything was different for me. So that's kind of a roundabout answer, but I feel like that's what's helped me. So it's like just making the intention that this is what's happening when I walk into a room I'm going to be energized. And the one thing that I that sticks out for me was um, by the author Anita Morjani. And she wrote the book called Dying to Be Me. She had a near-death experience. I have it. I have it. <laughs> it's such a, a good book. I love her. And I don't know. I interviewed her one day. And I think that's when I heard it. And if it wasn't that, it was on one of her Facebook Lives. But she said, if you're being yourself and you're not really dimming your light, then you would never get drained and you would never feel like you have to completely shut off. So uh -huh. when I'm truly being myself and I'm not holding back, I feel more energized than if I was holding back and not being myself. But so that's something to think about too, is, is there a, think about your environment and who you're hanging out with. And if you feel like you have to actually dim your light or hold back. That's so interesting. interesting. That's amazing. Right. Thank yeah. you for that. You're welcome. Oh, that's You're welcome. Any, any of our viewers that have questions, go ahead and, and pose them because uh, we want to engage you and, and give you some answers. Um, Andy, I just looked at the clock. Do we have a sponsor for our show tonight? 
Oh, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah. And <laughs> because it is the month of October, we've got a wonderful sponsor and it is called the Checkered Lily Apothecary. And this is by Kimberly Boshu. And she does um, like blushes and um, makeups and uh, what is it? Nail polishes and stuff. Yeah. I mean, stuff that I, I wouldn't wear, know. but it's it's pretty cool stuff. And yeah. um, I'm going to kick myself out here for a second so I can show you a couple items of hers. And okay. we're so grateful for Kim uh, to sponsor yeah. us. Thank you, so, Kim. Uh, yeah, um, she does uh, very mermaid type of stuff. I hope he shows her picture because... There she is. There she is. <laughs> and she makes lip glosses and bath bombs and all kinds of things. She sent me some samples to try and um, and some nice jewelry she made. She makes the, uh, there's the Little Mermaid, the jumbo salts and stuff like that. So go to her Etsy shop and check her Lily Apothecary. Of course, she has it. Um, check our link because she has it spelled differently. So thank you, um, Kim, for sponsoring us tonight. Really appreciate that. It's great. And Lindsay, I had kind of, um, this is kind of an off the wall question, but I was just curious because I wanted to ask you, you know, in, in how you, uh, in your business and, mm -hmm. and when people come to you for questions and stuff, I know, um, Debbie and her group have worked on missing persons cases and stuff. And it's, um, but I do feel like we need more people involved in doing that as mediums and psychics right. that can be extremely accurate because this is very, uh, it's, it's a very um, sensitive topic too. And um, doing that line of work, I know Debbie can speak on this. But I was curious with you, do you ever get those requests and how would you, how would you handle that? Or That's such a good question. It's funny because something just happened the other day. So it's interesting that you're asking this question right now. Um, I actually do work with a couple of medium friends and we work with a detective um, and we've done a couple of cases. I don't advertise it on my website. Um, just I don't know if it's more for safety reasons and kind of, well, I'm talking about it now too. Um, but I think for me, I would rather work directly with a detective or the family um, because I would, I get questions where people want to actually have me get answers for a family that they might not know. And Absolutely. I have to say, I can't do this if the family comes directly to me or if a detective or a police officer comes to me that I can work that way. So I just say I can't do it unless they come directly. And I feel like you have to be really careful mm -hmm. with writing online, like typing, because I've seen people copy and paste things that other people have shared. And then if your name's attached to it, and then they share it with someone and it's gang related or whatever it is, it's, it's not you know, then your safety is involved too. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I yeah. feel like I would rather work directly with law enforcement and then, or with the family. I work uh, only with the family and yeah. search and rescue, whoever can go out and find them. So I've done a lot of search and rescue and a lot of things for family because it. The information in the work and energy that you put into a case does no good in anybody else's hands. Unless you are working with a detective, I choose not to work with the police department and, and let them do their investigations and all of that. But um, I'm with you. I, the family, immediate family members uh, are really great and everything's in confidence, nothing shared publicly. But I right. work with C CSI Lenormand group, which is looks for missing people online. And um, and then whoever in my group wants to work with me, I always do my investigation separately. And then I take their information and um, and share it saying that, you know, here you go. Here's just some extra things. So, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. That it's, makes sense too with like getting your information first. That's what I do with my medium friends where we'll come together after we get the information so that we can confirm. And usually we're right on target with each other. Like someone else might get more of a, a vivid detail on one thing and then someone else might feel right. something else. So it's kind of interesting because it gives you that confirmation. Right, the CSI Lenormand, they actually got an address of uh, one of the fa other family members out, uh, you know, because we search maps and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you really get everything, but because of where what I do, I tend, I, I always do mine separately and yeah. uh, let them know that's for me. But a good thing, Lindsay, is not to advertise it, otherwise, you'd have requests all day long. Right. And <laughs> I don't even have it up on my website. I'm getting messages, which I'm grateful that, you know, people are thinking about it. But it's like you have to kind of choose where is your energy going to go? What are you going to focus on? Right. And if we focus on every single thing. Yeah. When, they, when you take on a case. And um, so right now I I just did my last one, what, in the beginning of September or something. And I said, until I get a group together and which can be worldwide and, and we work on stuff because I do missing persons and in, um, in homicides in Russia and all over the world. So yeah. until I get all those connections, it's so much energy to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and then to be so busy with everything else in life and family that I said, you know, we need to find these people. Number one, we do, but we need to have help each other. Right. So, great. Uh, Andy, did anybody else put? Um, any oh questions? yeah, I uh, I actually um, hit the wrong question here. Let me get back to the okay. right one. So this one is from Robin Smith Stanley. She's asking, do you ever connect with psychics, uh, mediums that have passed over, like Bernice Golden, who recently passed? And I'm That's, not sure if you're familiar with her. Yeah, it's so weird that she's asking this because she actually was on my show. I interviewed her and she oh. did just pass away. I haven't tried to connect in with her because nobody requested a reading that wanted to talk to her. And I... I thought of her and I probably could tune into her because I, I have talked to her before, but I just haven't done it. Um, I believe that we can. I really truly believe that we can. I, I guess I feel like he's a medium, even though he didn't share that when he was living. I feel like Wayne Dyer is one of those people where he was extra sensitive to, to different things. And I've tuned into him. My husband has two. We feel very connected with, with Wayne. And he comes through a lot. Um, and I've also given readings to his family too. But aside from just giving readings to the family, I just feel his presence. And I feel that we can truly connect in with those people. And I feel like we can connect in the same way as, as anyone else too, because they're, they're people. Perfect. You, totally, totally, Andy. You'd think that, you know, the psychics, once we go, we want to communicate. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to be ready. I'm mm -hmm. going to really screw with people because I'm going to think of something great <laughs> for the ghost hunters and stuff on my tombstone. It'll be some, <laughs> some kind of thing. I'm going to mess with people. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> oh, was there, was there another yeah. question? Yeah. Here's a really good one. And this... I, I really wanted to hear about this one as well. Uh, Nancy Jackson says, I would love to strengthen her skills more so, so, I, so I could do that type of work. I have a background in volunteer firefighting, EMS, and criminal justice. I would love to be able to help like that. Um, do you have any like suggestions for her, you know, just where she would probably go or begin or start? That's a really good question. For me, I feel like the first thing would be to set the intention that this is that you're going to focus in on on working to connect in with the other side. And for me, I actually started with being more alone by myself and taking walks in nature and really feeling like, OK, what do I want to do to carve out that time for me to feel different things? So that's and my goal was to connect in with Nick 
if her goal isn't to connect in with her own past loved one, she could actually focus on just the physical world and what she's feeling and take notes when she gets nudged to pay attention to certain signs and things. And I always say to keep a notebook um, you know, handy to write things down. If she wakes up with the song in her mind, write down the song, write down the date that it came, see if it connects to different parts of her day, if that song makes sense, if there was a message in it that she was supposed to get. I also feel like surrounding yourself with like-minded people is so important. So if she can find either a local group or a, a group online to practice feeling, and I would start with feeling because I feel like I didn't, I guess I did start with feeling because I felt Nick's presence. But when I was connecting with other people's past loved ones, it was so clairvoyant for me. So I would see symbols. And I kind of wish that I started with feeling the presence of spirit. Because I feel like when you feel the presence, it's without a doubt that, okay, I am totally with them. And the the clairvoyance is just like a bonus for you. I feel like you can connect yeah. in all different ways, but to stay open to receive the information in different ways. But I would say keeping a journal, surrounding yourself with like-minded people and putting yourself in a safe environment. When I say safe, it means like you would be okay to mess up. And I'm putting that in quotes because you really don't mess up when you're learning. You're just practicing. So I think it's important to surround yourself with those people so you don't feel like you're doing something wrong. Another thing that I did was I went to Reiki circles too. Um, so that's actually when I got some information too. I was just sending Reiki with my eyes. I didn't really know what I was doing, but the lady said, okay, imagine you're sending energy from your eyes. And I was doing that. And then she said, if you ever pick up any information about the person across from you, share it. And the one thing that I kept on getting was, a baby. I saw a baby and I saw an anniversary and there was some pain around that. And the girl that I sent the energy to, she said, this is the anniversary of a miscarriage that I had of, of her baby. Oh. So for me, it was almost like, whoa, this is weird that this is happening, but it was confirmation that there was something right. more. Right. I think building up that confidence and writing those things right. down when it happens is so important. That does wow. remind me, uh, Lindsay, of, you know, we had, and here's a good question was, um, let's see here. Somebody said, um, well, I can't find it. Uh, oh, here it is. Any advice for a meetup group to find missing mm -hmm. people? For me, like in my local community, I started out in like a spirit circle is what they call it, or a yeah. seance with like-minded people that came into this yoga center every week. And it wasn't, we weren't doing the, the Reiki, but we were, it was dark and everything. And we deliver messages to each other or whoever we felt drawn to. Mm -hmm. And it's such great practice. And people that don't think that they can connect are giving validation to that person that they're giving the message to and they're just in awe or they feel uncomfortable or they feel um, a lot of them will either see or feel and other people will often hear things. We have one person, she just hears, that's all she hears. She'll hear mm -hmm. spirit voices all the time, but she doesn't feel or see it. So right. it's amazing how people's gifts will open up in in that kind of a collective environment. Yes, that's so true. I love doing, I actually, before we got on this call, I was um, working with my medium friends. So we practice each week on the same day and the same time. And I think that's really good. The spirit circles, just having that group where you're continuing to practice and that dedication. And you start to pick up similar things. So that person that is hearing or he, yeah, hears more, you may pick up on their habits too and get information in a different way that maybe you didn't get before. That's why I love working with other people, other mediums. It's amazing. Definitely. Definitely. You have to, uh, you know, be among the peers and practice and talk about it. When I first started, um, when everything started coming in, you know, I could hear all this stuff. I was like, 
um, started doing readings and I'd get so excited. And I didn't have any clients where I live, so I did everything long distance. And I get so excited and I'd look around, there would be nobody, nobody to go, yay, I, I got it, I got right. it, or anything like that. <laughs> Yeah. And so I went all that time until I go, you know what, I'm going to make my own meetup. Mm -hmm. And I never asked anybody to join. I got like 335 people now. And, and we do uh, everything Reiki and, and meditation and psychic development and every, just a variety. But to be around the people is inspirational. Also, you need to practice. And yeah. because you're it, so many people don't have confidence and I thank God I do, but I've been doing so many readings and, and getting the validation. And I said, it's like eating, eating a cookie. You get a bite and you're like, Whoa, you've got to keep feeding yourself to yeah. build up that confidence. And then you, you don't worry about delivering some news or whatever you feel confident in it, but it's getting that even for me, getting back that validation is like, good. Okay. We're going, we're on the right thing. Yeah. And yeah. So do get yourself. And I think that was Grizel, right? Um, do right. find right. a meetup or a little group, even if it's just meditation, because meditation, you can connect with the higher stuff and, um, get into that, uh, type of situation where you could be uh, with people with open minds and all of that. Yeah. I know some, sometimes if you don't live in a place like that, maybe there would be an online resource or something like that. Yeah, there is a, there's a online group that, that I'm a part of, I'm an admin for it's the mediumship development group. So people for, from all over the world are in this group and you know, they create their own little spirit circles in there. So if you're looking for someone to, you know, to do that online. When I do my mentorships, we do the spirit circles. So we'll do like eight weeks of the spirit circles within the, the program. And then when they're done with it, then they go off and I say, okay, after the program, go and work together and you can form your own spirit circles within that community that I have online too. But even going to your local crystal store, I feel like they probably have something that they could refer you to because I, I feel like that's a good spot to find people too. That online right. group, is that something like a Facebook or some, yes. how can they join it? Yep. It's called, my friend Lillian started it. It's called the mediumship development group. Um, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Mediumship development group. And it's a Facebook group online. And there is like, I think there's over Right now, I don't even, 14,000 members, over 14,000 members in that group from people all over. So I don't know what state she's from, but there, and then they have subgroups too from there. Right. There you so, go. Okay. You, you and, guys um, have a place to go. <laughs> yes. That's funny you brought up Lillian because I'm, yes. I'm, I'm going to have her on. On, Yay. On, on, on here and i know you've guys i i believe you both worked with lisa williams and also with our friend brian bowles who's i i connected with in denver awesome. yes so, i haven't uh, met him before i just oh. see him on facebook but he could be connected into that in lisa's group too i'm not sure right oh so that's amazing Yes, um, Lily and I did a class together. That was the, the first class that we both took together in Chicago. And I love her. So we have another question here um, for you, Lindsay. It's uh, from Melissa. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, is it possible to try too hard to feel someone's presence? And I, what brings to mind for me is grief. But I'll let you explain further on that. Yeah, that's a really good point. I feel like when I was in that moment of deep grief and I wanted to feel something and I would get frustrated, like, wait, I felt you before. Where are you now? Then that frustration and the emotion, that human emotion could get in the way uh, if you feel annoyed or frustrated because I feel like that happened to me. I feel like if you know that the, that the person could come in a different way, then that's important to keep an open mind. So I just had a reading the other day and she's like, well, I want my dad to send me signs, but I'm not seeing any signs. And I'm like, actually, he's telling me he's communicating through your thoughts. So he would give her memories 
in her thoughts and make her think about different things. And she would actually hear his voice because he was communicating that with me. I kept feeling that. And I told her and she said, yes, I have been thinking of memories. And I did hear him laugh the other day in my mind, like a thought. And I said, that's actually his way of communicating too. So just be open-minded to that, Melissa, just because sometimes you may be getting the presence in a different way. So you might not necessarily have to like feel goosebumps to know that they're there. So I think if you can let go of the idea of it coming through a certain way, that helps. And I know it's hard as a human because we want it to always come through a certain way. That's right. beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but everybody has to be aware of signs. So I, I preach that a little bit too much, I think. But literally, they know my stories about telling the other side, literally give me signs and up come the street signs and the billboards. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Love yeah. it. Um, I I have a personal question for you. Um, well, my question for you, not. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yes, totally. Um, so I was wondering, um, and I get this asked quite a bit too. Um, people ask me, well, how can you tell if somebody you're connecting to is dead or alive? Mm. And are you using, are you psychically connecting to that person? Because I've had clients where, you know, they want a mediumship read and they say, I want to speak to my dad, but then dad doesn't show and it's somebody else. And yeah. then, or they'll say, let's say, um, no, my mom's alive. And yeah. Or, can I know you what you're saying. Explain your um, perception mm -hmm. on that. Oh my gosh, I know yeah. this is such a hard one to explain because I know exactly what you're talking about. So the situations where I felt like someone, just say someone wanted to connect in with their dad, but someone else came through, those situations that it happened to me like that was because their dad was still there, but I had to open up a little bit more to know that there was more than one spirit there. Oh, so that's, oh, right. so, so that was an interesting finding for me because Sometimes I had more than one loved one in spirit and they were blending together like a grandfather and a father. Um, and then they'd blend together as one. And I thought it was one spirit. And they're like, well, now you have my grandpa. And what I wasn't aware of was that there was actually always more than one person hanging out together. I just wasn't opening up to the fact that that's possible. So I know that doesn't answer your question directly, but just maybe this is helping someone else listening to this piece. To right. It. I had a lot of no, issues. That, with that. that helps. Okay. And then another thing was psychically, let me think. When I pick up psychically, it, it does feel very similar. It feels psychically and mediumship, it feels very similar. But I would say in my conscious mind, I always make an effort to do a mediumship reading first. So if someone wants a mix of an intuitive and a mediumship reading, I always start with mediumship first. So it's almost like my soul goes to the, the person that's mm -hmm. passed. And I've made a conscious effort to feel more when I first start. So I feel like I feel and I see. And when I feel spirit, I actually, my heart starts racing. So if before I go on stage, I actually feel my heart's racing. It almost feels like anxiety. So if, oh, right. if they can focus in on the feeling in your own body when your energy shifts, you'll notice a difference between a psychic reading versus a mediumship reading. But I think it's really being aware of your own body that helped me, I guess, become aware of it more, if that makes sense. That, yeah. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. I know sometimes when I do readings, uh, there'll be a spirit that is a little bit stronger and they actually yeah. kind of push the other person aside and they're there. One time I got twins and um, I'm talking and, and then all of a sudden the stronger twin took over and started talking for everybody. And the, my client just, you know, said, yep, exactly. So, um, you know, sometimes that happens when, or somebody has a more urgent, um, in its energy, more urgency, and they've got a little bit more, um, energy or power, they're going to come right in, um, ahead of people sometimes, you know? Yeah. But, yep. 
Yeah, um, can, can I ask you a question? Do you actually uh, see see them, see spirit? Me personally, mm -hmm. I've seen when Nick passed away. I had a visitation. I saw him at the foot of my bed. Since then, when I see spirit, it's more in in the third eye where I can see it almost like a daydream or a movie. I also have seen like I see sparkles or energy. So there's times where I'll see energy. And then there's some moments where I'm closing my eyes at night and I could actually, it's weird, but you can close your eyes. You can actually train your brain to do this. And you can actually see in front of you the room with closing your eyes. And I've seen little outlines of that. I kind of play around with that if I want to play with <laughs> just strengthening different things. And I'll close my eyes at night and see if I can see through my eyes. So it's almost like you're seeing energy. So I feel like that's a big thing. And at the corner of my eye, I might see like my grandpa, like at the corner of my eye, I'm like, wait, and I just kind of do a double take, but not when I'm doing a reading and mm seeing the person in front of me. And I, I'm gonna be careful of my words because I would love for that to happen. So I'm open if that's gonna happen in the end. Right, but for right. the right moment, it's more like a clairvoyant vision. Well, let me tell you that that came in um, just only, I think, two years ago for me. Mm -hmm. It's, I, it's like somebody had said, like, you're going to get a download or whatever, upload, whatever it was. And um, I really, everybody was seeing people and can describe them. And then one day I'm like, I got this. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. so it's so amazing because there's another validation. But as we were talking before, everybody has different gifts and they yeah. get get it in different ways but i want to add to that that what happened in my life was near death more all this stuff came in and then age i think and getting a certain age or whatever it was more stuff coming in so some of you out there just be open-minded because you're just going to turn around and god's going to say here you get to do this now and more yeah. stuff comes in yeah, so I really feel like we can fine tune each area. Like if we want to focus on, I, I said this to my medium friends, if we want to focus on clear hearing, there's this, this pitch, there's an app for dogs, dog whistles, and it's different pitches that normal humans probably wouldn't be able to hear the different pitches. But if you keep on practicing, you can actually hear it. And I, you can fine tune that hearing. And I believe that anything that we do physically as a human, it will help our mediumship too. But the big thing that I felt when I first started mediumship was I had this idea that everyone heard spirit like you and I are talking. They saw spirit like you and I are seeing. So I was always disappointed in my readings. because I'm like, Me well, I'm too. not seeing it. <laughs> so I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, I want to get to that point. So I yeah. think it's important to talk about that because some people listening might have this idea mm -hmm. that we have to receive it a certain way and just knowing that no it doesn't have to be any way it actually it, it could be totally different so just keeping an open mind about that and it's well, like, thank you for that you're welcome i just looked at the time so it's kind of wrap up time um but i do want to tell you what i was working on let's see if I can. <laughs> can you see uh bet oh. mittler <laughs> Oh, focus, focus. I love it. Yeah, we are doing uh, the dead talk, or in, we're entering the uh, scarecrow contest. So we did build her, and um, so I'm going to be making a mask for the scarecrow. So that was kind of fun. But I want to say thank you. I did get some fan mail. I did get fan mail. Oh, put this down. Uh, and I thought it was pretty cool because um, it is a fortune a palmistry card. So anyway, fan oh. mail. <laughs> and thank you, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos sent me a little bit of fan mail. That was kind of fun. Oh, that was fun. It. Yes, it's good luck, good fortune for Halloween. <laughs> I thought that was so great. But anyway, we need to wrap it up and we just didn't have enough time. I think we need a few more hours. 
I, Lindsay, oh I, God, I do yes. hope that you come back and be on the show I would again. love to. I love talking with both of you. Thank oh, you so much for having me. Oh, you just Thanks. gave such wonderful things that people need to know. And do write those books. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Got to finish All them. Right. <laughs> okay, we're going to stay. Um, don't don't sign off, Lindsay. We're going to go to the lob lobby, but we want to say thank you to all the viewers for um, being with us. And Friday at 6.30, we'll be on for Fun Friday. We're going to give away cash. I like mm -hmm. that. I love sending cash. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of fun and um, do free readings. So we'll see you at that 6.30 Pacific time, okay? Carlos, thank you, Carlos. Carlos is in the house. I always have to say that. <laughs> Bye, Robin and Marsha. Bye, Andy. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye.